let's imagine that today you're on the chemistry lesson and I'm your chemistry teacher. And we are going to have a test right now. Tell me please, which compound can we get from sodium and chlorine? Come on, your answers. Sodium 2, chlorine 3, and more variants maybe? Come on, come on, guys. One to one, okay. That's, that's, uh, that's, the, right question. Uh, that's the right answer. Um, in school, people say that the only right compound of sodium and chlorine is just salt that we use for cooking. It's uh, sodium 1, chlorine 1. But there was a man who replied exactly like the guy from, from that side, he replied, really wrong, and uh, he did it not in the class, he did it in the most respectful scientific journal, and that guy was Artem Aganov. But he proved that he is right, and now I work in his lab. What did he tell? He told that such compounds as sodium chlorine 7, sodium chlorine 3, sodium, two, uh, sodium 3 chlorine 2, and so on, they are stable. But he made a small remark they are stable at high pressure, up to 300 GPA. What does this number mean? Um, actually, if we take 200 elephants and we put these 200 elephants on a high heel of a shoe, and the pressure that exerts this high heel on a surface will be about 100 GPA. And let's remember this number. And that's not a fantasy or a fairy tale because these pressures they are real in the universe. The most part of matter in the universe exists under high pressure and even higher than just 200 elephants on one high hill. And we are at the beginning of the scale and the most part of matter in the universe is in, in its right part. But the most amazing fact for, for the high pressure is that chemistry under these conditions is absolutely different. All the rules we have learned at school stop working at all. This high pressure, it turns upside down all our knowledge about chemistry. So, what did we use at school? Um, this is a periodic table, of course, you've seen it. And um, it is divided usually in two parts, for metals and non-metals. And each of them have their own properties. For example, metals, they have metallic luster and they conduct electricity. And non-metals, they're the opposite. They don't conduct electricity and they don't shine. For example, oxygen, it's number eight in the right part. It is typical non-metal. It, it's a gas, so it doesn't shine and so on. And sodium, it's number 11, it's a typical metal. But it's in usual conditions. As soon as we increase the pressure just a little bit, we see that oxygen becomes metallic. Actually, it's normal because all elements under high pressure tends to be metallic, but with one exception. And that exception was found in our lab, and the exception is sodium. If we increase the pressure, it becomes that sodium becomes transparent. And that's a great, really great result for chemistry because when we told it to chemists, they just didn't believe us. Because sodium metal, and it becomes non-metallic. That's really nonsense. <coughs> yeah, and we've sent this result to the most respectful scientific journal, to Nature, and they rejected this paper. And they told us, uh, you know, that's not true, we don't believe you. You need to prove it. And of course, it's a normal process of interaction in the science. If you predict something, you should prove it with the experiment. Yeah, and we went to experimentalists and we asked them to help us. And the experimentalists, they're guys very skeptic about theory because they don't like theorists, especially those who tell us that all chemistry rules are wrong. But we went to good them. And uh, later on, they've sent us these pictures. Here you see sodium under different pressures. And on the left upper picture, you see that at pressure about 200 GPA, it becomes really transparent. So they proved our results, and finally this paper was submitted to Nature. 
after these two, I think, big, um, big results, we decided to take a new challenge. In the periodic table on its right part, you see special elements. They are called novel gases. And they are called like this because they don't interact with anything. They are just inert. And um, I think it sounds like a challenge because during years, people were obsessed with the idea to make these gases react with even something. They put them in extreme conditions. They tried to react them with uh, the most powerful oxidizer with fluor fluorine. And they tried to bombard them with electrons and many other crazy things. And finally, they could do uh, all chemical compounds with, um, with all of them, but one, but helium. During re a really long time, helium was considered to be the only inert element of the periodic table. And people could not obtain anything with helium, any chemical compounds. They were all very unstable. And if we think over this problem, we'll come to conclusion that helium, it has eight electrons. And um, what we can do with it is just to, f to take one electron away from helium to other atom. Because as a noble gas, helium doesn't have any more space for additional electron. And that's why people try to react it with fluorine. We decided to make very illogical step. And we took helium and sodium. Sodium can give just one extra electron to any atom. We tried to model the system. And finally, we got, we got a new compound, sodium to helium. We are the first people who could make something with helium. We could make a stable compound of sodium and helium. And this result was also proved by experimentalists, but at this time they were not so skeptic with us. Oops. Um, and after this, all these results, we decided to, to, to go to our next, maybe most ambitious project, uh, that is related to life. We decided to uh, design some new compounds that uh, new life can be made of. And we can do it only in one way. This way is to have a look at our Earth's life, the only one we know, and as, a, as an alternative to our Earth's life, we can build another one. So let's see what our life on Earth is made of. And it's mainly made of proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids, like DNA and RNA. And all these molecules, they're huge molecules called polymers. And to realize what polymer is, I, I can tell you one analogy. Uh, bead necklace. So like bead necklace is made of beads on a thread. These polymers are made of small molecules, of small parts, they are bounded to each other. For proteins, for example, this, the, small, the small molecules are amino acids. For lipids, there are several options, for example, uh, different acids. For carbohydrates, these are monosaccharides. For nucleic acids, they're nucleotides. And as you can see from, from these pictures of these compounds, uh, they're based on just one element. It is gray on the picture, and it is carbon. That's what we call organic chemistry. So all our life on our planet is based just on one element, on carbon. But there is one remark. These compounds work perfectly. The system works perfectly on Earth. But if we increase the pressure a little bit, they become unstable. And if we want to, to find some other compounds in, in other conditions, what we need to do? We need to design a new one. And we decided to, to take nitrogen for this, for, this aim, for this challenge. Why did we do it? Because of two reasons. First of all, nitrogen is located close to carbon in the periodic table. And it, it forms really similar chemical bonds, really similar types of chemical bonds. And the second reason is that uh, nitrogen at high pressure can form nitrogen chains. 
So those polymers on the analogy of which we want to build a new life. And what did we do? We took carbon compounds that we, that we have on the Earth. We just changed carbon to nitrogen, and we studied the stability of these compounds. And stability can be of two types. First one is thermodynamical stability, and it answers the question if this compound can exist or not. And the second type is kinetical stability, and it answers the question if, if it can exist, so how long it can exist. And the answer was that nitrogen is even a better candidate for, uh, for life elements than carbon. If carbon compounds are not stable at high pressure, so nitrogen will be. And we haven't seen this life yet, but we already know what, what this life can be made of. It can be made of nitrogen compounds that we can bound to each other and get these polymers that would be like analogs of our Earth polymers. And actually, I've just told you my way in science, because I've started from experiment. I used to be an experimentalist during several years, and I used to work with that organic compounds. But later on, I made a step forward, and I came to the lab where I work now. And now I work with the nitrogen compounds that are as for me are more interesting because it's a new chemistry. And um, for me, it's very exciting. But I'm here not to tell you that it's really exciting for me. I want to tell you that it's very important for all of us because what I say is concern, concern all of us. That's a new science that is related to everyone here. When we go beyond the Earth, the chemistry there will be absolutely different. Even here, now, under our feet, inside the planet, the chemistry is absolutely different from what we have, what we observe from the surface. And it's everywhere. I mean, the, this chemistry we can observe everywhere. The theoretical predictions already showed us a lot of new information about other planets and even about life there. And this field is not well studied yet. That's what we do. Thank you.